What are the requirements for U.S. citizenship? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States at our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. Today, we're going to talk about all the things you need to know in order to be eligible to apply for U.S. citizenship. Becoming a U.S. citizen has a lot of benefits. One is that you get to vote, you get to get a U.S. passport, you get to leave the United States and stay outside the United States for as long as you want. And you need you get the ability to sponsor your uh, family members to come to the United States. So there are a lot of benefits to U.S. citizenship. In this video, we're going to talk about the requirements for U.S. citizenship. What do you have to show in order to become a U.S. citizen? Well, the first thing you have to show is that you are a lawful permanent resident. A lawful permanent resident is someone who's been granted a green card to the United States. And if you got your green card based on marriage, then you can apply for U.S. citizenship after having held LPR status for three years. If you got your green card through some other method, either through employment or some other family member, perhaps, or uh, through uh, asylum, any of those other ways that people get uh, lawful permanent residence in the United States, for the most part, you're going to have to apply after five years, five years. So you're going to have to show that you've been a lawful permanent resident for five years. You're also going to have to show that you haven't abandoned your U.S. residency. That is, you haven't stayed outside the United States too long. You haven't had a trip outside the United States for more than six months. If you leave the United States and stay outside for more than six months while a green card holder, that can stop your clock and terminate your residence as it relates to continuous residence for purposes of a citizenship. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose your green card, but it could um, put a uh, hold on when you can apply for citizenship. You might have to come back to the United States and wait a certain amount of time and get your good time, quote unquote, inside the United States back up to par so that you're then eligible to apply for citizenship again. When you apply, you're going to have to show that you spent half the time during the uh, green card period inside the United States. That is, if you're applying on the three-year rule, you have to show that you have 18 months inside the United States, 18 months in one day. And similarly, if you're applying under the five-year rule, you have to show that for the last five years, you spent at least two and a half years plus one day inside the United States. That's the uh, time frame that you have to demonstrate that you've been inside the United States. So even if you haven't had a trip of more than six months, if you've cumulatively spent more time outside the United States than inside the United States, then you're not going to be eligible to apply for citizenship at that time. One other thing to keep in mind is that in order to apply for citizenship, you have to have been a resident of the jurisdiction in which you are applying for at least 90 days. So let's say you wanted to apply in San Antonio, Texas, you're going to have to prove that you've lived in San Antonio, Texas for at least 90 days before filing that application. That is if you move from Detroit to San Diego and then apply three days after moving to San Antonio, that's not going to work. You're going to have to wait the full 90 days and then apply because you'll have to prove that up. And a lot of these rules, like the time outside the United States, trips of more than six months, and uh, the 90-day rule before you apply for citizenship, that's all your burden. You have to prove eligibility. Um, and it's going to be your burden to prove that. So sometimes we have clients who receive requests for evidence to demonstrate that they did, in fact, live in that jurisdiction for at least 90 days prior to uh, filing for citizenship. Obviously, you're going to put your dates of residency on your N-400, and that's usually how they figure that out. One other requirement, you got to be 18. You have to be 18 to apply for citizenship. You can't apply for citizenship until you are 18 years old. And then, of course, most people are aware that you're going to have to show that you can read and write in English sufficiently well to be able to communicate with the officer and to pass the written and oral uh, question that they ask. And then, of course, you're also going to have to demonstrate that you understand the civics and that you're able to get six out of ten correct on the civics exam. The last requirement for U.S. citizenship is that you are a person of good moral character. Now, good moral character is a legal term of art. It's a tricky kind of a thing that they use to give themselves a lot of discretion at USCIS on whether or not to uh, give you your citizenship. And it's a subjective standard, which means it's sometimes up to the individual officer. It's supposed to be whether or not you're living up to the moral standards of the community in which you live. But I've never heard of a jurisdiction by jurisdiction, good moral character assessment. It's not like people in Miami are considered to have different good moral character standards than people in Seattle or San Diego. So generally, it's just something that if you've had con conduct or engaged in behavior that sort of offends the officer or offends the morality of the United States, that's one way that they can deny you your citizenship. And of course, that's one of the ways we see a lot of denials. There are people who get denied for technical reasons, but you can also 
get denied for failing to demonstrate good moral character. And of course, there are a ton of questions on the N-400 to figure out if you've ever been involved in the kinds of activity that would demonstrate that you lack good moral character, prostitution, drug dealing, uh, commercialized vice, uh, helping people sneak into the United States, all those kinds of things. So there's all the the things that make you ineligible as a hard matter. That is like if you didn't have enough time in your jurisdiction or if you stayed outside the United States for too long and then you have subjective things that USCIS can deny you for. And then of course, like I said, the burden is always on the applicant, the person wanting the immigration benefit to demonstrate that they have satisfied all the requirements of US citizenship. And if there's a question, you're probably going to lose. So it's your burden. Uh, USCIS does not have to help you meet your burden. They can actively try to keep you from ma making your burden. Uh, they don't usually, but they can. And so you need to remember, it's your job to prove that you're eligible for citizenship. It's almost like you have to go in and grab it. You can't just wait for them to give it to you. You have to demonstrate overwhelmingly that you're a person of good moral character and that you satisfy all the requirements that I mentioned for U.S. citizenship. So there's no tie goes to the runner. There's no, oh, we're going to bend the rules for this guy or that lady. It's your burden and you either prove it or you don't. If you have any questions about this or if you're thinking about applying for citizenship, give us a call, 314-961-8200. You can email us, info at hackinglawpractice.com. Be sure to join us on our Facebook group, which is called Immigrant Home. If you like this video, we ask that you please share it out on social, that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that you join us. Uh, we're going live every single day in January um, at different times during the day. We'll be posting the schedule uh, on our YouTube channel and in our uh, LinkedIn and uh, Immigrant Home Facebook group. We'd love to see you in there, answer as many of your questions as we can. Um, we're going to do at least 31 minutes for 31 days and we'll see how that goes. Thanks a lot and have a great day.